So this has been a video a long time coming. I had a world of fun with this little 2000 <clears throat> watt solar hybrid inverter. Uh, I'll put the name up on the screen somewhere. But the main thing is the model number goes by Sun 2000 G2. This is a 2000 watt. 240 volt, well, 230 is what they claim, but it is a split phase 240 volt uh, inverter. 40 to 60 hertz, or 65 hertz. Um, DC input is 45 to 90. That's going to become important later. So, I bought this for testing. The main reason why I purchased this one was because of this little input right here. That's a current sensing clamp. This is a zero export. Inverter, solar inverter. So you can have your batteries, well, you have your DC input. That could be batteries or solar panels. And then your AC out. It will match frequencies, but it won't export to a grid if you are connected to a grid. If you are connected to a grid. Now, <clears throat> this thing was about $400, I believe, and it failed in less than 20 days of operation. I already have this one open because part of uh, attempting to get the warranty through the manufacturer was they wanted me to do solder repairs on the main board myself. Now it turns out that the DC caps or the DC the caps on the DC input are sized very close to that 90 volts. Let's take a look at it. You see I already had it apart because they wanted me to rebuild it myself. And if we look at the DC caps here, they are indeed 100 volt caps. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. So, yeah. So initially, when it happened, what happened was I had it hooked up. I was doing some testing with the current sensing clamp. One night, I went in, changed some programming on the current sensing. Woke up the next morning after the sun had come up. Well, I woke up before the sun came up, but I came out to check on it after the sun was up. And the screen was off. But that's odd. Powered it all down. Powered it all back up. No dice. No screen. No nothing. Disconnected the DC input because one of the complaints I'd heard online were these caps blowing out. Disconnected the DC input, still no dice. Reconnected the DC input, disconnected the AC input, no dice, no screen. Pulled it down, I could hear rattling inside. I'm gonna pull you in, I'll show you what actually blew on this, and then we will move on to some of the replacements. All right, so sorry for the uh, little shaky cam here to get the actual video we had to go full auto but there you go you can see the mosfets blowing there one on that side and if we pull some wiring away you can see the one right there completely opposite of it was blown away also that bad boy right there so the first two blew now i don't well not the first two i guess it'd be the second two now i don't know if this was a voltage issue on the AC input side. I don't know if this was a clamping issue, a thermal cycling issue, or just straight garbage. But what it came down to was I wasn't going to deal with this. So now it should come as no surprise that I do not recommend the insert name here brand that I just threw away. 
but I had heard a lot about Grow Watt. So this is the 3000 watt Grow Watt model number. Flip it up and see if maybe you can see it. Uh, the 3000 TL LBM 24P. So this is the 24. I did not get the Wi-Fi module. I don't care about the Wi-Fi module. I'm not going to download any app. Interesting enough, they do have an office in LA, allegedly. And I called the number and somebody answered and talked to me about this one. Did they answer my questions entirely? No. Um, I really wanted to know about the automatic transfer switch in here because this one is going to be used in an off-grid situation where there will be a generator hooked to it. This is going to be the primary inverter for the entire house, well, trailer. And uh, yeah, the biggest thing is I need to know that when it's time to run the microwave, this should run the microwave, but when it's time to run the microwave maybe for an extended amount of time, or maybe it's time to run the AC unit, I doubt this 3000 watt bad boy is going to be able to do it. I can stack these, that will do it. That's a future upgrade potentially. So when I called, they weren't really clear on it. The uh, book I believe says to put a 40 amp breaker on the AC input. So if it's a 40 amp, 240 volt, or 120 volt, that should be more than enough to run the AC unit. But I think that's like a peak breaker. Um, so who knows, we'll find out. Um, I'll take you along on the build of this. It'll be on another date, another time. We got two 200 amp hour Chins batteries going with it and six 320 watt solar panels. Um, so we're gonna have tons of solar, uh, but yeah, so we're gonna open this up and see what it looks like compared to the other one, because why the fuck not? Little cover, metal, nice. This is where all our inputs are at. The AC breaker, input breaker right here is rated at 40 amps, so, um, we'll see. All of our connectors, our bus, DC bus bars. One thing to note on this grow watt is if you try to put it into the lithium iron phosphate or any lithium battery profile, it does want to be connected to the BMS. And that's via an ethernet cable. Now, obviously that's not possible on my Chen's batteries, but uh, you can program custom, at least from what it looks like, you can program custom uh, charging profiles. And the Chen's batteries are basically meant to replace most other 12 volt flooded batteries. So as long as we pick appropriate, you know, cutoff voltages and charge rate, we should be good there and float charge. Um, this is what all comes with it. This, this and this. It's a USB cable. I'm assuming it's for some sort of programming. Haven't gotten that far into it. I'm hoping to be able to do everything from here, but I will have my laptop with me just in case. And then the rest of this is for paralleling. This is a serial or the communication for paralleling, and this is the voltage for paralleling. Um, so probably won't need most of this, at least not right away. I mean, crazy enough, it looks like a very similar MOSFET arrangement. Um, so, this must be the, this is the PV input, so this must be the MPP and everything. Um,
so yeah, this was our MPPT. Um, this must be a pretty, maybe a pretty standard board. I don't know. Um, if anybody's curious, there's your part numbers and everything. I hope you can see that. I will say, granted this one is a thousand watts more, everything is significantly larger. There's that. Um, it's interesting, every, every uh, screw has a mark on it. Like somebody, as they were, like they put it together and then somebody came after and, and marked it for the assembly. It's kind of cool. Um, most of the components, or a lot of the components, have elastic on them, not the connectors, which is kind of nice, I guess, because then we don't have to worry about it. There's a little brain board over here. That's the one that was going up to the display. This. Anyways, um, that's about it. That's the inside. Let me. I'm gonna hop around to the back side of the camera, make sure that you can see everything in here, and then I'm gonna slap this bad boy back together. I got one more inverter for us tonight. And what do we get with it? Get some lugs. We get a fuse. Instructional software. I'm assuming some kind of communications. This is the Sun Gold. TP6048 for brevity on this one I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, put the relevant information from this somewhere on the screen right now while we start pulling this apart Let's take a peek under the hood. Oh, I didn't notice this before. Um, it's definitely gotten bashed. Look at that right there. got hit pretty good. We'll see what it looks like. Yeah, there you go. Might be able to straighten that out a little. Holy. So, that's where our weight is. That's a beast. Um, some some things look similar. Some things look not similar. It's elastic on a lot of these connections. Solar input. Uh, it definitely is not the same board as the other one. But it is very similar, even with the communications going to it. So um, I definitely kind of want to get down to this. Let's take a look at it.
Ta-da. So I think what originally happened, because this was kind of all loosey-goosey in there, is that this guy got cross-threaded in this stud. a heat sink right there uh, with the thermal pad um, so also stuck on this PV input bus right here so uh, I'm gonna unhook you and bring you around because I don't want to unhook anymore it's just getting too big and then some big caps all right so not really going around to the other side but bringing you back to the shaky cam. So we're gonna pull this up. We got an isolator right here. Gotta make sure we get that back to where it belongs. But yeah, as we look down in here, there's the little thermal. Kind of figured out what happened here. All three of these were knocked out, and you can see it, something hit pretty hard right here. Yeah, it caused some damage. So, um, hopefully, it doesn't cause any problems, but. Yeah, I mean, if you're paying for weight, I got my weight. So, that's the difference between a 400 an 800 and a $1,500 Chinese inverter. Um, we'll see how they work. I'll take you along definitely for the off-grid build. This one, I don't quite know fully what I'm doing with it yet. It may just be straight testing. Um, mainly because it was really hard to find a 240 volt split phase inverter that was a single one that you didn't have to parallel. And this was it. It just doesn't have the current sensing plant for a zero export but definitely feels like it might hold its own uh, we'll catch you on the next one I'll put a link to all of these down below I definitely do not recommend the first one don't waste the money don't waste the time unless you want to buy the extended warranty I guess for like 15 bucks and ship the damn thing back every six months to a year um